This $2,500 basketball is the most viral 3D print on the internet. But try to make it yourself and everyone will tell you, don't ever expect it to bounce. But if I cared what other people thought, I wouldn't be a Knicks fan. And I wouldn't be a Mets fan. So we gave ourselves 30 days to try and print our own ball. And after trying, failing, and trying again, we ended up with seven unhinged tech products. Including a basketball that might actually bounce. So yeah, we started with two prints that are pretty straightforward. So this is a speaker for your iPhone that we made here in the studio, and it only took about two hours to print. So in a typical workday, you can have four of these. So the reason we started with this one was because of the multi-material. Alex and I were really excited to, to get our hands on that. So this was one of our first prints that we did when we decided to test the real functionality of this beast of a printer that we have. You can see it's got five spools on it. Most have one. So normally when you're printing something with multiple materials, if you only have like what we were using before, which is just one nozzle, you kind of have to babysit the thing and then like pause the print change the filament, extrude the little gook and make sure that it's clean and good to go, then like resume and go back and forth. Yeah, so I think we should actually see how this sounds. So yeah. let's press play. This is regular. Sounds pretty good. And it sounds not good. Now, wow, obviously, so quiet. It's, you can't even hear this right now. So let's see what happened, put in the speaker. Oh, that's so loud. <laughs> what? I can't even hear what you're saying anymore. Oh, now I hear you part. Oh, I mean, so... it does. It definitely. <laughs> I didn't catch any of that. What did you say? Oh, you know, it, it is so loud. I can't even hear I know. myself it's think. Really. So there's a very expensive phone out there that costs multiple thousands of dollars, but you can't get it in this country just yet. Marquez has one because he's Marquez. The rest of us have to make do. So this was our solution. Three times the cameras. <laughs> three times the processing power. What do you think? This solves so many problems and creates so many <laughs> more. But if you're like, you know, into stonks or like, you know, finance or something that will require you having three phones at once, you're like a, one of those ticket sell, like resell bot guys. This is really gonna allow you to be productive in so many ways you probably shouldn't be. This thing you can actually download right now and print yourself if you want. Shout out to Alex, we'll link his stuff in the description below. He's the designer that came up with this whole beautiful monstrous design if you have three Pixel phones at home that you want to put on. Now that I was more comfortable with the Prusa XL and had gotten some prints under my belt, my next thought was to print something bigger. This is the Stim Station. You can't see it right now. They'll probably put it up on the screen, but Miles is watching Subway Surfer's no, Minecraft edition. This is a Roblox is speed run. A Roblox speed run. I put it on 2X speed within the YouTube player because... <sighs> Gen Z, man. Why not? What are you going to do? Good right? Lord. You know, you yeah. can watch Waveform. And you can watch stay the informed. studio channel. You can watch the studio channel and like MKBHD, and subscribe. That and would hit. be hitting the like button, hitting that bell. So anyway, this is printed with PLA, but as you can see here, there's still some like guck around the edges. That is because the supports and the actual thing itself was made of the same material, meaning that it's harder to scrape it off at the end. Of the day. This is this was the print where I learned about organic supports for the first time. This is not one that actually went on this, but just to illustrate. So organic supports look like a tree, which is why they're called organic. It'll just hold it up kind of like this. And that way when you're done, they just go boop. But like we spoke about earlier, having them made of the same material makes it a little bit harder to scrape off. So we kind of left this here for educational purposes because you know we, we normally have masterful prints. So if you have a printer, unlike this one, like the one we used to have, that doesn't print in multiple materials, you might have a lot of this to deal with. On top of the fact that these are considered organic, uh, they're actually the most uh, filament efficient as well. So inside of these, I'll just do this live, hollow, which is nice. So oh, they're, really they're cool. completely hollow on the inside. Just, yeah. Mm -hmm. So with our necks in pain and our eyes slowly dripping from our skulls, I thought the stim station was a win, and I was pretty confident I could find a way to print supports for the basketball. And then our designer friend Alex sent us a link to something very special, a special bouncy filament that's easy to set up and print and squishy, like a basketball. But before using this new filament to print my white whale, I figured I'd try printing a white crocodile. Can we do like a fake cut where you throw it towards my foot? Oh. 
fuck. What the hell? <laughs> Sorry, I didn't see you there. I just wearing my 3D printed croc. I am pretty impressed by just the like the flexibility of it. Like the bottom is a squishy sole, mm -hmm. which I would not think of when I think of 3D printing. So fun fact, this is the material that I wanted to print the basketball out of. And I was oh, like, cool. well, I need to make sure that it is flexible. Because if you watch, again, my sensei's video on the 3D printed basketball, Joel. So what Joel found when he was printing was that the flexible one was too flexible. It mm. was too tensile. So because there was too little energy return, it was absorbing too much it's of like the It's like a deflated energy. basketball almost, right? Right. With the standard rigid material, the PLA, he bounced it Shatter. and it did bounce, but then he bounced it a second time and it cracked in half like an egg. <laughs> so then in doing some research and talking to Alex, who designed our other very fun products, he put us onto this filament. The selling point is that it's PLA, which is traditionally the rigid material, but somehow it is more bouncy and more tensile. So it's sort of like a fusion material. So for the croc, how long do you think that took to print? I would guess between like 15 and 24 hours based on my experience with similarly sized objects. objects. It actually yes. took 20 hours for one shoe. But think about it this way, right? Is that faster than how long it would take to one day ship a pair of Crocs from no. the website? No, because I would need two. I could print oh. two. <laughs> you could print a shoe with this material. It's squishy, it bounces, good. I felt pretty confident that it could work for a basketball. But of course, there's still more work to do before attempting my holy grail of prints. <laughs> I figured I'd take another couple easy wins. A new friend, Scott Eugen, had kindly lent us some of his files to try printing. A beautiful iPhone dock and his very fun Macintosh mini print. This one is actually a dock for the iPhone that is supposed to act like an alarm clock kind of thing and it charges your phone, it charges your AirPods, everything like that. We couldn't get it to work for this guy because the infill is a little too squishy. So we decided to try it with a different infill. This one. This one, after this one failed, I was like, man, I don't want to run out of filament. So this pattern I thought would save filament, but ultimately ran into some sort of issue again where it just wasn't able to finish. Still too squishy though, so we started. That is broken. So then we did this one, which actually worked out perfectly, the support, uh, but for some reason, halfway through, it stopped. So this is the other half, which we have to glue on, and then it's a perfect product. We did this one. And then this one was just how Scott did it himself. I think very similar to, to this print. He might have picked this pattern because it looks cooler on video when you're printing a time lapse. Yeah, right. Actually, this is like probably the only thing <laughs> of everything we've checked out today that I would actually I know. use. Because... And it's the one that keeps cursing us with a uh, failed print naturally. Mm -hmm. um, it's really cool. Thankfully, we could just get it from Scott because he also sells them at his store. So check that out. Ooh. Oh yeah. Oh, that was... <laughs> with, with, with a heavy drop. Oh, it's not that bad. You could walk into a Starbucks with this. Yeah, you can walk into a Starbucks with this. I don't, I don't know if I'm doing that. But this, is the Macintosh Mini Harper. This was made by our friend Scott who lent us his design to print ourselves. This is a M2 Mac Mini underneath that slots in really nicely and plugs into an external power bank, which is in a drawer that slides into the back. And then it is an iPad Mini up front that runs as the display for this, thus giving you a little baby computer. I can't imagine that doing this at a desk all day, like with this insane scaling, mm -hmm. is not going to have detrimental effects on your eyesight. Like, your eyes are already gone. Time. You've been staring at a screen since you were born, it's fine. I feel like if you want to show people how good you are at 3D printing, there's only one thing you need. Which is? What if you printed cheeked up Fred the Frog into this design? Would that make it better for you? Like if the handle was like on the back of his hat. You know what? I'm sold. We have a file for Fred, right? We have a file for this. We could theoretically combine the two, right? As much as we wanted to keep messing around, we were running out of time to print this basketball. So we left the printer running for 60 hours. And when we came back, something pretty special was waiting for us. So this all needs to get trimmed off. And the bottom may be looking a little rough, 
but if I'm careful, the rest of this feels pretty good. It was time to give this bad boy its first bounce. Bounces. I think it worked. Let's go! White is it looks so good. So much of the detail is similar. Mm -hmm. And I think what we found is the only difference is that like a downward bounce mm -hmm. is a little different, but mm -hmm. a drop is almost identical, mm -hmm. which is crazy that you can just do that at home. Mm -hmm. For $2,500 or about, about 30. Full disclosure, my basketball broke after about a week of nobody being able to keep their hands off it and bouncing it a million times on our hard concrete floor at the studio. And I'm a little bummed that the culmination of my efforts now has a big old crack in it. But that's kind of the perfect representation of what this whole process was and is. When it comes to 3D printing, perfection is earned, not given. So we're going back to the drawing board to make a perfect 3D printed indestructible ball that will never break. Subscribe if you want to see that process. So thank you to Scott and Alex for providing us with these really cool designs that we are able to print and giving us tips and expertise on how to make some of this stuff come to life. Also, thank you to Joel for coming into the studio and teaching Alex and I how to set this up and what to do with it. Uh, check out his video for everything behind the scenes, linked below. If this video gets 80,000 likes, I will make a version of Fred the Frog that is three times bigger.